check one, two, three, four. Fine. That's okay. Oh gosh, of course. Yeah, just just grab one from up there. Okay. Yeah. Don't even worry about it. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, two blocks for class. How are you? Good. Lots of yoga today. No, 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 you're not. We got we got like three minutes, four minutes. It was like yoga gold. Perfect. Okay, bye. No, I'll take care of it. I think we're still waiting on like two. Yeah, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. So good. Well, have a good time at your party. Thank you. Yes, we have a program with... Hello, hello. How are you, Sarah? Good. You like my queen?
Namaste, yogis. Welcome. Take a moment and just wave to your neighbor, maybe eye contact or a little virtual high five across the room. If you're practicing at home and you're like, hey, cat, <clears throat> grab a block. If you're at home and have two blocks, awesome. No worries. If not, here in class, uh, find yourself upright on a seat on the block. I always find that this provides a little bit more blood flow of pubic bone and lower pelvic region into leg, ankle, hip. And as you settle into your posture, close the eyes and invite yourself to fidget, to mobilize your body in a few different ways that alleviate what might feel like an itch uh, or a sensation not yet resolved prior to class. So fix your shirt, move your shoulders, look up, look down, blink the eyes, wiggle the jaw, make some noise. Yeah, just yawn it out, get it out, move it out. And this permission that we give ourselves on the mat creates a very safe, reciprocal place. So that as we set intentions or thoughts for our movements, they become more potent. Our soul, our energy body, our emotional quotient begins to believe that we will do as we say, <laughs> act as we so desire. And so those intentions become more clear at a physical level and at an energetic level today practice to create peace, peace in the body, peace in the mind. Breathe in, breathe out. All the while, again, allow yourself to change the shape, to move the hips forward, to open the knees or change the way that you're sitting. You could even lie down into Shavasana if you want. Peace in the body, peace in the mind is the directive. Do any programmed actions on your mat have you locked in a way that doesn't provide that directive? Peace, overworking, overextending, too much strain or stress in the face or the jaw. Take an inhalation. Exhale, let it go. Om Hate Om. Om Hate Om. Om Hate Om. Translates literally to mean, may I find peace in my body, peace in my mind. Everything is okay. In English, that phrase doesn't have as much weight as the mantra of Om Hare Om. Mantra, vehicle for the mind, is a directive, a program. And it creates a line of thought. Om Hare Om. Om Hare Om. Sing with me. Om Hare Om. Two more, nice and loud. 
Om Hare Om. One more say. Om Hare Om. Breathe in through nose. Exhale, let it go. We create this platform of peace. You even start to notice the breath can become longer. There's less rigidity, more flow, more ease, more grace, more patience, more peace. Breathe in. sealed out their nose. A practice to create peace. Travel forward onto your knees for tabletop position. And along the way, grab your blocks and take them to the second, rather the first height. Yeah. And take the blocks at the top of the mat space two fists in between the blocks to set up shoulder width distance, and then palms into the center of the block. So rather than forward or too far back, they're right there in the middle. Yep, good, and then bend the elbow, and just move the body a little bit with this elevation. And notice the increase of height provides length in the lung. The space that creates buoyancy, of life, breath for life. Cat cow. Inhale, lower your abdomen down and look up for cow pose. Exhale, round your spine cat and just notice this posture is slightly easier or more accessible. Again, inhale, cow, lower down, look up. Exhale, round your spine cat, pull abdomen in. Good, one more time. Inhale, lower cow. And then as you take cat, this time flip your toes and lift off the ground. Come into what would feel almost like a tuck and curl. Shift your shoulder blades over your wrists and then pull your chin into your chest. Yep, you could walk your feet forward a step if you wanted and then continue to round your spine up so your abdomen is high for three, two, one. Lower your knees, keep your hands as they are. Take your knees wide, toes touch, child's pose, forehead down to the ground. The philosophical concept we're exploring is called Santosha. Santosha translates to mean contentment or ease. And the visual I often utilize for practice is the eye of a storm, how chaos ensues in the external, and yet there is this beautiful, stoic, peaceful, almost still center, Santosha. Can you allow the external distraction, the fidgets, the judgments, the thoughts, the pains, everything, to just be noise on the outside? and then choose to practice an internal balance of air, wind, of connection. Even here, inhale to your fullest and feel your armpit slightly wing open. Inch your fingertips forward so your arms are straight. And as you exhale, sink your chest down in towards the mat. Yep, one more time with that. Great alignment shifts, breathe in. With your exhale, again, lean your heart down to the floor. Nice. Up to tabletop position. Take your blocks and place them off to the side. Adjust yourself forwards. Take your knees back one step. 
and come into downward facing dog. Peace within the challenge of the body. Can you make this posture more accessible for you? And by that I mean, is there a part of your body that feels locked? Do you feel a lot of pressure uh, rushing to your forehead or your jaw? Does a bent elbow help you? Does a bent knee help you? Does a shorter stance help you? And then probably the most beneficial would be larger movements of air. So inhalation to your lung, exhalation as if to deplete the diaphragm so that the pubic bone will lift up into your core. Yeah, so to feel that again, lift your heels nice and high. Hold your heels up, but exhale, actively pull your low belly button into your rib cage. Yeah, I saw that, good job. Tiptoe to the top of your mat space. Ragdoll, opposite hand, elbow, bicep. Take your feet nice and wide. In fact, take your feet as wide as the mat. Once you do so, allow the knees to rotate outward to stretch the outer IT bands. Relax your weight into your toes, but keep your heels down. And then broaden the space behind your neck. So actively draw your chin in and relax the top of your head down. Real nice. Here for three. Soften for two. And then relax hands down to the ground. Toe heel feet to touch. Slow rise to stand. Samasti tehi, hands to heart. Close eyes, pause. With this directive in place, practice to find peace of mind, peace of body. Can you agree into that personal? Contract. In moments where you remember this directive, study it. Notice, are you struggling anywhere at any time, at any moment? And can you feel that external, like the tornado on the outside of the storm? And then choose to breathe into that center eye of the storm, Santosha. A literal form of practice rather than perfect every time. That's what this class is, it's practice. Inhale through your nose and out through your nose. Great breath, patience so far. That's probably one of the biggest benefits of Santosha is longer inhales and exhales. Your body at a neurological and uh, nervous system level is calmer. Your fight or flight and your adrenals are down. Inhale again through the nose and just notice how long this breath might feel to you. Exhale, let's and go. Relax your arms down by your side for alignment. Inhale, mountain pose, that asana rise, reach up. Biceps in line with ears. Good, and then let's talk about probably one of the biggest culprits of tightness in the neck. Take your arms out like a goal post, so before a back bend. Take your pointer and piece fingers, rather, and just kind of touch right there on the top of the shoulder. Yeah, so it's the rhomboid. You can feel those nugget muscles themselves are rather tense or tight, and that's often where a headache will ensue. Now, reach your arms back out to neutral, and be sure the elbow is below that rhomboid line. Yep, good. Now, take your elbow back behind your pectoral line. Feel that stretch, good. Inhale all the way up to mountain. Good, take your hands behind your head. Squeeze your elbows in alignment with your face. Good. Now, push your elbows up towards the ceiling. So this gets underneath tricep, bicep, shoulder. Rather than any type of drop of the head and neck, this creates a basket so that as you go to lean back, the neck is super long and the back bend is actually in rectus abdominis or the front of the abdomen. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, lean into your back bend. Tilt your elbows up and imagine that you could pull your head away from the rhomboid muscles that we just targeted with the fingertips. Yeah, like pull your head away and then lift your sternum and chest up. Yes, good. Three, two, one. Inhale, mountain. Rise up. Good, and we'll just set this up neutrally. Elbows out wide. Pull the elbows back behind. Be sure the neck stays narrow and just lean into your back bend. 
Yeah, you want parallel with the floor rather than drop back of head at all. Yep, elongate, beautiful. Inhale, Tadasana, rise, reach up. Forward fold, Uttanasana, bend knees, bow to space. Inhale, halfway lift, place your hands on your legs. Good, same thing here actually. Forward fold, drop your head. Interlace your hands behind your head. Good. Inhale, halfway lift and bow your elbows up. Yes, behind your ears. Yeah, so widen the arms. Yeah, real nice. So good, so good. Bend the knees so you can flatten your back. So lift your head up so it's in line with the glute for three, two, forward fold release. Let's try that one more time. Hands to the ground this time. Inhale, halfway lift, hands on shins. Yeah, just see if that changed that shape for you at all. Exhale, high plank. Plant your hands, step your feet back. As you plant your hands and step your feet, high plank. Remember, om hare om. Peace in the body, peace in the mind. What is the largest place of dissonance right now? Is it that you're trying to hold this pose with vigor? And can you wiggle anywhere? Yeah, like your toes, your fingers, your biceps, your shoulders, your neck, your spine, your jaw, your mind, your breath, your abs, your core, your back. Breathe in. Exhale, downward facing dog. Omit chitaranga and up dog for alleviation of rest. We flow, connect the breath into the movement. Again, grace in movement. Inhale, lift your heels. Exhale, walk to the top of your mat space. Inhale, halfway lift, elongate your low back. Exhale, forward fold, relax your head. Inhale, mountain pose, Tadasana. Be cognizant of how this works. Back bend, cactus your arms, lift your heart, elongate the back of your neck. Inhale, mountain pose, rise. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana, bend knees, bow forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, high plank. Plant hands, step feet. I practice to create peace in the body. Inhale, peace in the pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. Flow, ease, grace in the movement. Inhale, lift both heels. Exhale, tiptoe forward to the top of your mat space. Take your feet to hip width distance. Grab one of your blocks. Place your block high above your kneecap, in between your inner thigh. Yeah, so make it rather personal, rather than the knee, a little bit higher. Other block in your hands, and rise up to mountain pose. Stand all the way up. Good. So this is optimal alignment for chair pose. I know, confusing, right? Think about this sensation. Squeeze the block in, so this plugs the legs in. Now push your hands into the block, great? Now watch first. Column misalignment in chair kind of looks like this, right? The low back sways, the arms are here. All this is doing, like I can barely breathe. It's actually cutting off air supply where? The rhomboid, top of the shoulder blade. So you'll literally lean back until you can get your torso parallel with the ground. Try that on. Bend the knees, squeeze the block and lift the block up above the head. Yep, but bend the knees until the thigh itself is parallel with the ground. Yeah, so it's still chair, but elongate the arms for three. Stand all the way up in two. Rise all the way up to stand. Yeah, good. Now, how many of you stopped breathing, felt really tense, squeezed your jaw? Okay, so that's Santosha. That's, that's the tornado. Okay, let's do it again. Let's get windy. Okay, and just see what happens. Can you like wusa or om hare om once you get in there? I don't know if you are schools of bad boys for life, you know. Inhale, breath. Bad boys, too, to be specific. Bend the knees. Sit back and down. Om Hare Om. It's like you can feel the eruption of challenge, of stress, of angst, of tightness. And then take an inhale. A softening exhale. Rise all the way up to stand. This is so bad. Oh. Inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Take both of the blocks. Place them off to the side. So heel your feet in together to touch. Tuck and curl to a tiny ball and look forward. Grab your blocks in your hands. Good. Find a little element of chair pose before we move on. Electricity, a current. So lift your heels up and then squeeze your knees and inner thighs together to touch. Chair pose translates to thunderbolt or lightning bolt. And that's honestly what is missing most of the time from the legs. There's not a lot of heat rising. It's all in the low back. 
okay? Or in the chest or the shoulder. You want feet, power. Flex the toes into the ground, squeeze the knees and the inner thighs, and actively pull your abdomen in. Yeah, that'll target inner hip thigh muscles. Let's try this together. Blocks off to the side, forward fold. And then right away, chair pose, but try to keep that same electric current that you feel in the legs, yeah, as if there was a block there. Now take that and grow energy up to the shoulder blade. Yep. Enliven the fingertips, so wiggle them just a little bit. Breathe in, lift an inch. Forward fold release. That's it. Good job. Inhale, halfway lift. Remember, a big breath there. Exhale, high plank. Plant your hands. Step your feet back. Peace in the body, peace in the mind, soft somewhere, inhalation, downward facing dog, exhalation. Inhale, lift your right leg high. Stay here, bend your knee up above you, open your hip, good. Look underneath your left shoulder, so look towards the side wall, yeah, away from the door, good. And then push your right shoulder blade down. A bend elbow is super helpful. A subtle bend in your left, so your bottom knee, also super helpful. And then wiggle your jaw a few times. Just make sure you're not clenched in the head. Three, two, return your right leg up. Exhale, swing through to low lunge. Step your foot, grab one of your blocks, place it on the inside of your right foot. Left hand on the block, right arm reaches up for the twist. Good. Santosha. So assess the external distraction. Wiggle where you need. And then alleviate some of your tension with a gaze down towards the floor. So look at the block even. Yes. Good. Now actively pull your right shoulder blade open. Yes. Three, two, both hands down to the ground. Drop your back knee down to the floor. Grab both of your blocks. Crescent moon. Take your blocks to their tallest shape. Yeah, good. Fingertips on the blocks right in line with the hip. And then your back foot is actually the focal point. So how often does this hurt the knee? Every time. And more often than not, it's pressure. It's a lot of down. So what you wanna feel is that the back foot is so engaged, you could almost lift the knee, right? That's how engaged your quad is. And then all of a sudden it's less the knee and it's more the front of the thigh. Pull the shoulder blades back. Good, you've got three, two, lean forward. Come into a low lunge, take the blocks themselves. Bend your right knee until you can get your left heel up over the arch of your foot. Yep, good, you're doing great. Here for three. Start to launch your weight forward in two. Take the blocks with you, come up into a grounded airplane. Fingertips on the blocks. Lift your back leg up parallel with the ground. Yep, good. Think about the top of the head. So bend your right knee just a little so that you can lift your chest up so your heart is not below your hips. Your heart is above. Yes, three. Start to bend your right knee to step back for a crescent lunge. Two, land softly. Leave the blocks. Crescent lunge. Anjaneyasana. Next. Hands to hips, bend your back knee to hover two inches from the floor, and then move through that hydraulic, let's say movement, <laughs> uh, exercise, that's better, of just a push and a pull of that pulley system of glutes, hamstring, thigh. Yeah, and just feel that still stuck stagnation is not actually the most beneficial, but this is actually quite nice. Three, find neutral in two, and then reach your arms up to open warrior two, elevate. Good. In and out of your front knee a few times. Just notice anything that needs to be adjusted for more comfort. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, extended side angle, lean forward. Another really interesting space of agitation. Rotate the shoulder blade, the hand rather, in circular motion so that it feels that you are actively exfoliating against this ball and socket joint, how the arm bone plugs into this armpit shoulder structure. Yep, good, and just realize that you walk around with this tightness all, all day. 
and then you come to yoga and we actually get to work against it and release some of it. That's a joy. That's a real nice santosha. Find neutral, extended side angle. Inhale, star, rise up. Exhale, hands to hard horse. Yeah. Now, shorten your stance. So walk each of your feet in a step or two. Yep, still allow the toes to point out, heels to point in. Good. And then just soften. Inhalation, rotate your pubic bone under lightly so you feel the back of the glute. And then exhale, melt down an inch. Yeah. Did your eyes get really big? Right? Did you feel tense? Right? There's that moment of like, whoa. Okay? And then Santosha comes in. So external distraction, chaos. And then inhale. Relax something, anything. Your jaw, your feet, your toes, your brain, your breath, your eyes, your stance. One more time. Star pose rise. Warrior two to the front. Inhale, reverse warrior. Tip your body up and back. Good. Exhale, high plank, hands to the ground. Hold. Downward facing dog, hips high. Take a breath in. Audible breath out. So let out some noise. Ah, good. Again, a little longer on your exhale. Inhalation, big breath. Big breath out. Ah, better. Inhale, elevate your left leg up. Breathe in. Pause here. Bend your knee. Open your hip. Look underneath your right elbow. Yeah, so under the bicep. Good. Lift your left knee up an inch. Subtle bend in your right to your bottom knee. Super beneficial. Yeah, good. Another moment here. Be sure the heel doesn't sickle. So it's almost in the same position. Good straighten this leg. Yeah, you can do it. Then this foot goes up. You're fine. Three, two, return. Left leg up to the sky. Breathe in. Exhale, come through. Low lunge. Good. Grab one of your blocks. Place inside of your left foot, right hand on your block, left arm elevate. Yeah. Tiny little fires everywhere. You kind of hear this a lot on the mat. Where can you put out a fire? Where can you alleviate something tension wise? I often start with the neck. So look down at the block and this can really change uh, just that state of agitation or overexertion. Take a breath in, both hands down to the ground, drop your back knee down to the floor, grab both of your blocks, crescent moon, inhale, come up. Fingertips on the block. It's just like a light little touch, just so that you've got more of that reminder to lift. And then notice if the kneecap is quite struggled by this, you're not alone. This is actually very difficult. However, change the shape with a press into the foot. And then all of a sudden the shin and the calf inside of the quad and the hamstring are what's protecting the knee. Yeah. Yeah, yoga is supposed to be good for you. You have a tendency to really push and you can really hurt yourself. Stay for a moment. Just breathe into that tight space. Santosha, so external chaos. Softness in that sensation and then lean forward for a low lunge and we stretch that muscle. So lean forward into the heel is over the arch. Good. Walk the blocks forward. Come into a standing grounded airplane. Yeah. So lower your back foot and lift your chest. So like a seesaw, you want your leg to go down? Yes, Mark, good. Elevate the back line of the body. Remember to lightly pull the chin into the chest like you're in a halfway lift. Yep, three, leave the blocks where they're at. Two, step back, crescent lunge, Anjaneyasana, rise. Hands to hips, bend your back knee. Maneuver yourself up and down a few times. Yeah, take your time. Good, breathe. Back up to crescent lunge once you're ready. And then open warrior two. In and out of your front knee a few times.
Rotate your palms up and down a few times just to let go of any tension you might be carrying in the forearm. Yeah, good. Find neutral. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, extended side angle. Lean forward. Rotation of your right arm in circular. Yeah. Just feel any of those noises that come from this movement, like the literal wind, a louder vibration to create inner sensations of peace. Find neutral. Inhale, star pose, rise. Exhale, horse, bend your knees, shorten your stance, sit deep. Yeah, and just close the eyes. Imagine practicing Santosha in your life off the mat, feeling the chaos of a conversation, of a moment in traffic, of a really challenging factual learning of something, something that's going on in our community, something that's going on in the news. All these things are chaos, and yet, we have the ability to challenge that dissonance with an acceptance of internal stability. Breathe in, breathe out. Star pose, rise, reach up. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse, warrior, up and back. This time, high plank. Down dog right away. So just push into the posture. So we won't use blocks for the flow. Stay with me. Move with your breath. Inhale, lift your heels. Exhale, walk to the top of your mat space. Toes to touch. Let this be easy. Inhale, halfway lift. A big breath, though. Exhale, forward fold. Draw your pubic bone into your rib cage. Inhale, chair pose, Utkatasana. Squeeze your inner thighs like an electric current. Exhale, forward fold, relax your head. Inhale, halfway lift, big breath into the back body. Exhale, high plank, down dog, right away. Just push to the shape. Inhale, your right leg lifts, simple flow. Exhale, low lunge, come through, no blocks, knee stays up. Inhale, crescent lunge, rise to stand. Exhale, warrior two, follow your breath, use your breath. Inhale, reverse, warrior, big breath in. Exhale, high plank, down dog, ride the breath down. Hips high, hips high, hips high, left leg, breathe in. Exhale, low lunge, good breath. Inhale, crescent, could be a little bigger. Exhale, warrior two, hear your own breath, move with it. Inhale, reverse, breathe into your chest. Exhale, high plank, down dog, good job. Inhale, high plank. Child's pose. We are 35 minutes into practice. It's a lot of time. It goes by quite quickly as we develop these blueprints for success. And just notice, can you allow this directive, intention, to be present as you pause. Let distractions be very real, in fact. Sips of water, uh, dries of sweat, fidget, change the shape, whatever you need to do, those are normal and they're the external chaos. The more we let them happen, the sooner we'll get to that central balanced place. For two breaths, inhale to your fullest, and then a big open mouth breath, exhale. One more time, breathe in, breathe out. Inhale up to tabletop. Exhale, make your way around and onto your seats. Take both of your blocks with you. How you doing? Easy, so easy. Santosha, ah, tomato, tomato, it's just, there's a calmness that can be on the mat. I often feel at times that especially spaces of abdominal contraction are so physically strenuous. There's a lot of tension in the front of the 
lung, which is where we need oxygen. So the block is gonna provide all of the core engagement that we want. Like this is what we want the most, is to tone this area of the core. Then, rather than compression of the top of the abdomen, this block will support the back of the head. So from here, it's an inhale and then straight up. I'm barely lifting off the ground. The block doesn't come back down to the earth. You just lower an inch, lift an inch. Let's go. Inhale, lower an inch. Exhale, lift an inch. Yeah, it's a very small adjustment. And the block is more at like a flat diagonal shape into the head. So you can really pull it against your head. Yeah, good. You've got a couple of these breaths. Yes. When it's a little more, more like this. So it kind of gives you a little bit of a headrest. Inhale, exhale. Does that feel a little better? Good. Four more. Yeah, do you notice how you're shaking though? <laughs> this is good. This is a really deep part of the abdomen. How about two more? Last one. And release. Grab both of your blocks just for a moment. Take them off to the side. We're gonna use them again. If you're at home and don't have blocks, no worries. These are just active elevators of the challenge in the actual lift. You can do it without the blocks just fine, as well in class. However, if you're ready for it, legs up the wall, block in between your calves. Same thing, block behind the head, elbows point up towards the ceiling. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, squeeze the block in your calves, flex your feet. Yeah, this is the core. Yeah, right, keep your gaze up on the ceiling. There's no contraction here happening in the front of your chin. So your chin far away from the chest. Yeah, good. Low back stays on the floor. How about three more? Two more. Last one. Good. Both blocks off to the side. Yeah, did you feel in your face, rock and roll up to a seat, grab both of your blocks. Was there ever a moment where you were like, ah, right? Did you feel it? Did you stop breathing at one point? Was your jaw tight, head tight? Those are really great reminders of what the external of Santosha is, okay? And the, the hope is that we can do all of that without that exacerbating of the nervous system. Boat pose is a really great space to feel this. So you wanna feel, a lot of times this posture is a struggle. It's like, ah, my legs, okay? So the block, same thing we've been doing so far, block behind the head, and you'll literally just lean back and lift the feet, and then, I know this seems silly, but try to smile and not like, hi, I work at Disney. Thank you for puking on me kind of smile. You know, it's more of just like a ah, softness of the face, like yoga Xanax, okay? Just like, ha, ah, okay? Block behind the head, elbows in line with the face, lean back, or like a yoga chamomile tea. Maybe that's more relatable. Lean back, squeeze the block in between the inner thigh, look up towards the ceiling. Yeah, notice. Some of you have your gaze forward. You've got to look up. Lean your head back. Yep, yep. Three, two, and release. Come back down to the floor. Yeah, Santosha. Okay. Oof. Say that word with me. Go ahead. Santosha. Two times. Santosha. One more. Santosha. And it takes this to like this. You know, a little more share. A little more like peace. Right? I don't know. It's in there. It just comes out. Second set, we'll take the block in between the calf. So same thing we did before. Block stays behind the head. And you'll literally lift up and now squeeze the block, elevate the elbow. So we're turning this into a core exercise, not a back pain uh, experiment. You want this all about the core. If it's not the core, well, what's the point? That's the whole point of this pose. Now, practice some of the chaos. So wiggle, flex, snarl if you need to, grr and grin and bear. Ah, and then soften the face, relax the mind for three, two, one, release. Take your blocks off to the side. Baddha Konasana, feet to touch, good. Third and final. Working into full variation of both pose and avasana. Peace fingers onto your big toe. Take your feet out wide like you're in a seated happy baby or frog. Walk the heels back so that you can pull the rhomboid down. Yeah, so you wanna broaden that part of your chest. 
Now, as you go to lift your left foot off the ground, notice, does your spine naturally go in? It's very rare, very normal rather. You wanna feel that that is what happens, so that directive of up. Make it easier on yourself. I know, right? Come back down, good. And rather than a gaze forward, look up. Here we go, right foot. Look up, 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 look up. And down, good. Same thing here. You're gonna want to literally lift and look forward. We just wanna see what it looks like in the mirror. It's just literally what wants to happen. Instead, kick and look back, literally, and then pull your knees towards you. Yeah, pull them towards you for three, two, come back down to the ground. Good, full variation. Walk your heels into center. Extend your left leg straight up in front of you, okay? I know, how many of you are dead on though, right? Where do you need to be? Up, lean back, look up. Yep, good. Yeah, kick the heel, kick the heel. Lean back, lean back, lean back, lean back, lean back. Yes, and down. Good, other side. Again, watch first. Common misalignment is trying to get there from here. You've got to open up the chest or else there's not enough room to straighten the leg. Left leg, rather right leg. Here we go, right leg up. Good, lift your chest up, 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 three, two, come back down. Good, full variation, watch first. Rather than here, literally, trust fall, okay? Just lean, lift, kick, and press. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Santosha though, did you see how calm I was in that shape? That's not because I'm magician. It's practice. I've felt that shape so much that I like know that if I oh, stress it out, it's gonna suck. No, it's like, oh my God, peace, man. Peace and beauty. Oh my God, love. I'm fine, everything's fine. Om Hare Om. Inhale to prepare. Kick, lift. Look up, look up, look up, look up, look up. Now pull your heart up, 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 up. Shoulders back, yes, three. Two, release, oh my God, it's so beautiful. That's really it, that's all I wanted to teach today. Have a great day. That's your own work, okay, on your own. Okay, and if you have, a, if you have like a little kiddo anywhere near you ever, they're so good at it. So don't judge yourself by how, how good babies are. They're really good at it. Why? Because they live in that like, oh my God, my, my, I'm a baby, you know. Uh, forearm plank, grab the block, place it in between your inner thigh for support. Same electric current. Grab the other block and place it in your hand. So providing you a support system all the way up and down the spine. Now we will cool down right after this. We're literally at the end of class. So just notice the acceleration of the heart rate today from both and now forearm plank is just enough to really touch that layer of difficulty to get your attention, but not to knock you off of your center. Good, we're not here for too long. How about three breaths, but like real breaths. So breathe in and feel that buoyancy of self. Exhale and squeeze both of your blocks and then soften your shoulder blades. Good, another. Good job. From here, yogis, drop down to the knees, take your blocks. Place them up at the top of your mat space for later use. Make your way onto your seat, all the way under your back. Happy baby, Ananda Balasana. Grab the tops of the shins and just rock to the right and the left a little bit. Hug your knees into your chest. Plant your feet down for bridge. Tickle your heels to measure distance. Inhale, lift, hips up. Good. Now, for just a moment, actively press your sternum, so your rib cage, towards your chin. Yep, and then actively keep your head down, but elongate the back of your neck. Yep, and then last one, pull that rhomboid, like that back bend muscle we felt, down. So open the front of your chest. Yes, so good. A little bit more wind capacity here for you to breathe into. Take an inhalation. And then exhale, lower down. Supta Baddha Konasana, soles feet touch, knees spread wide. Left hand to your heart, right hand to your belly. This is such a common hand placement. And the reason 
is the cyclical communication of your body. A breath that travels from the heart and replenishes into the core, into the abdomen. The sensation of compassion and then a true emotional sense of self, embracing one's confidence, courage, protection. Begin to the yang, the ease and grace alongside challenge and exertion. We're here a few moments. Fantosha, fidget if you need. Let the chaos happen. We can't really control what happens, but we can control our reaction. body wants to fidget, fidget. It wants to move, move. It's, it's uncomfortable. Ooh. We want more comfort on the mat at times. Use your hands. Actively draw your knees into your chest. Very slowly, without too much exertion, rock to the right and the left, and then back and forwards, come all the way up to a seat. Cross at your ankles, crawl forward. Take your blocks and place them wide, so off the mat. Step your feet back down to the floor and come down onto your abdomen. Think of this like a wide arm push-up, but we'll do Cobra, inhale, push your elbows forward, press up halfway, exhale, lower down, but pull the shoulder blades open as you lower. Yep, good, two times. Inhale, up, exhale, pull the shoulder blades back. Yes, last time. Push the blocks off to the side. Interlace fingers, chest expansion. Pull your chest up, lift your feet up and away from the floor. Locust, Shalavasana. Push down through the pubic bone. Maybe repeat the word Santosha to yourself real quick, just so you remember our directive. Peace in the body, peace in the mind. Soften the jaw, soften the eyes. Breathe in one time. Exhale, release, arms by your side, left ear mat, look right. Switch sides, gaze and look the opposite direction. Yeah, and just calm that fight or flight residual energy that's anywhere in the body. The desire to move on to the next pose, the anticipation, the expectation, soften within. Slow press to tabletop. Make your way around onto your seat. Grab both of your blocks. Right leg will pull in. So think of this like a variation of half pigeon, but more engaged. Extend your left leg out to the side and long. So rather than in front of you, see if you can get your leg open. Yes, good. Now, both of your blocks in hands, take them to either side of your leg, good. Now, before even going for the folds, push your right knee down to the ground. Ooh, yeah, like really push it down though. <laughs> Good, now flex your front foot, so left toes back towards you. Drag your left leg back, and then walk your blocks forward. Just one step, and this is it. So as far as you're gonna go, just elongate the back of your head and neck. Yep, you wanna feel this up the right oblique, right side body right rib cage, right hip, right glute. So anywhere that you might feel this, yep, you can walk the blocks a little further forward if you don't feel anything just yet. And then tilt your right shoulder down, yes. Now walk the blocks again, and then drag your left hip back. A little better, good, 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 good. Four, very subtle. Three, two, rise, 
Neutral switch. Good. So the difference would be between this and that. So you, you do want to still turn, so you're getting that inner hip stretch, like you do in half pigeon. Push your left knee down. So like really try to use your core muscle. Yeah, on a scale of one to 10, this is like a seven, rather than like a, oh, two, three. You know, you rah, push, and then, but keep it all inside. Drag your right leg back. Walk your blocks two steps forward. Yeah, good. And again, actively press your left knee down and jut your heart forward. Yeah, rhomboids back, head, neck long, heart is tall, flexion of left foot, right foot. Yeah, flex both of your toes. Lots of action. Two breaths. Slow rise. Take both of your blocks with you. Lie down onto your back. Blocks will come underneath the thigh, in between the knee and the hip. Go post the arms. Yeah, use the blocks as ease, support. You can pull the elbows down a little bit if it's straining your breath. Peace in the mind, peace in the body. Use your hands to move your blocks off to the side and out of the way. Hug your knees into your chest. Give yourself a nice big squeeze. And then just take a few moments to activate a few postures. So a twist, if that feels good, maybe Shavasana, you're already ready for. Legs up the wall or happy baby, shoulder stand, plow, just a couple little fidgets with the body naturally, whatever feels good. Remember, overexertion is not the idea. Yeah, easy, easy. Grab the shin, maybe in happy baby, instead of the feet. Make it easy on yourself, easy, soft, calm. Yeah, switch out your sides if you're in a twist and need to do so. Gradually, as your ready yogis begin that process of surrender. Today especially, I recommend your feet as wide on the mat as you can comfortably get them. The palms off the mat and face up towards the ceiling, external rotation. Shrug your shoulder blades under, which will actually feel like you're propping your chest up, and then scoop the back of your neck again flat. Yes, really good. Big breath in. Big breath. Stillness is often one of the largest pillars of practice inside of yogic tradition. And yet it is one of the most difficult for the modern mind and body. There's a lot of distraction, a lot of dissonance. I find that the benefit of this practice of Santosha is really where we meet in the middle. We give ourselves permission to feel external chaos to fidget, to move, to mobilize, to breathe, to distract, to focus on the distraction, to feel the distraction. And once we do all of those things, then, maybe then, we start to feel that release, that relinquishment of our hold, our hold, our grip on reality, on the moment, on control. Feel the chaos, the distraction, and then relax beyond it. Hey, Radhe Radhe Sham, Govinda Radhe Shri Radhe. Breathe in. Open mouth, exhale. 
Hey, Radhe, Radhe, Sham, Govinda, Radhe, Sri Radhe. Govinda, Radhe, Sham, Gopala, Radhe, Sham, Sri Radhe. Hey, Radhe, Radhe, Sham, Govinda, Radhe, Sri Radhe. Shri Radhe, Shri Radhe, Shri Radhe, hey. Hey Radhe, Radhe, Sham Govinda, Radhe, Shri Radhe, Shri Radhe. Hey Radhe Radhe Sham Govinda Radhe Shri Radhe Shri Radhe Govinda Radhe Sham Gopala Radhe Sham Shri Radhe Hey Radhe Radhe Sham Govinda Radhe Shri Radhe Shri Radhe Shri Radhe. Hey Radhe Radhe Sham Govinda Radhe. Shri Radhe. Sounds that vibrate devotion to the chest, to the heart, to the lung. Govinda, Gopala, the release of tension. Shri Radhe. May love, may heart, may lung expansion. Alleviate the tension. Hey, Radhe Radhe Sham, Govinda Radhe Shri Radhe. Breathe in. Open mouth, exhale. Hey, Radhe Radhe Sham, Govinda Radhe Shri Radhe. Take with you this practiced muscle memory of peace, of ease bookends of exploration. And start to wiggle the fingertips, the toes, the nose. Engage all the way from your core and heart center out into your toes and your fingertips. And pull your body in opposing directions. Elevate up through the arms and extend long through the feet. Roll to one side. Fetal pose, bicep as pillow. Practice to create peace, peace of mind, peace of body. Can you allow for moments that feel heightened to be soft, softened, softer, just with your thoughts, with your breath, with your reaction? Don't ignore the chaos. That's very real. The external exists. The practice of yoga gives us that opportunity to soften within and not be so rocked. Slow rise up to a seat. Palms on the knees. Om Hare Om. Om Hare Om Om Hare Om Om Hare Om Sing with me Om Hare Om Om Hare Om Om Hare Om The last time Om Hare Om Anjali Mudra, thumbs to forehead, recognition of knowledge, bow forward, ceiling and practice, namaste.
Mmm. It's the good stuff. Yoga. That elation from yoga. Uh, yoga stones, you've probably heard before. But when you feel like just yoga brain, like what is that, right? It's oxygen. And this little strap of your backpack, right? We hold all of our stress. Oh my gosh, my stress is right here. Rhomboids down, shoulders open, Care Bear stare. And then all of a sudden it's like lung. It's like, oh yeah, I'm alive. So I have a lot of issues and problems and great. And human, like we have that softening. We have that opportunity to, to edge and soften, edge and soften. But just like this space, it is a practice. So go easy on yourself. Um, Hi, work at Disney. You know, like remember that face uh, and bring that into everything. Just notice the next time someone's like really pissing you off. I use it all the time. And I'm like, Santosha, 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 Santosha. Um, you'd be surprised. It happens a lot, right? Who'd want to piss me off? Like, oh my God. All, every day, right? And um, I have to really watch myself because I have a lot of bite um, because I'm so truthful and honest and vulnerable and open and real and that's not the way the rest of the world is um, at times. And so that softness, I just whew, practice. Um, yeah, what's tomorrow? Wednesday. I taught so many classes today. Wednesday, noon, if you want to come and get an extra dose of some yoga. Otherwise, I'll see you soon. Have a good night. You're welcome. Huh? No, I just said, yeah. Like I just, I saw your, I saw all of your knee movements today in class when I was.